This is Hannibal here from TheHannibalTV.com with a special three-way call here with UFC Hall of Famer and former Impact Wrestling wrestler Stefan Bonner and MMA pro wrestling author slash pro wrestler slash former MMA fighter, the king of Connecticut himself, Matthew Granahan. How are you boys doing today? So great, man. Yes. How are you? I'm excellent. Not as good as uh, Stefan. I understand his business is going nuts here for the uh, check, Hativa. Check it out. Hativa Cannabis on Demand. We're an online cannabis resource, but um, primarily, you know, you want to learn about your favorite strain. You look it up on Hativa. We do this great two-minute review videos. All, we list all the lab analysis and data along with it too and then you can learn all about it and then boom find uh, where's it available and right now all the dispensaries are shut down so you got to deliver and then hitiva cannabis on demand we also deliver uh currently based out of vegas but we're spreading out so we might even deliver to your uh city we're fulfilling um, um that's the thing we're primarily a, a tank company so we're a very sophisticated website and this put a um an ordinary amount of stress on, on testing our capabilities as a website, but we handled the test no problem. The amount of volume that came through due to this um, tragic coronavirus was a huge load on the system, shut down most servers and most dispensaries that can handle the load. We had a, we could, uh, we did, took it like that. We just had to buy about 30 cars to keep up with the business and it's doing really good. Um, so check it out though, learn about your favorite strain. Uh, where it's available, and um, you know, if you want to fucking order, now is the time to do it. Delivery only, baby. Do you have a strain named after you yet? Ah, a strain name. That's wow. That's a great idea. You know, my good buddy Cantwell. He's owner of Green Life Productions. He put me in the UFC. He was the last WEC champion. He knocked out Brian Stan. He went on a bad run of decision losses when they were absorbed by the UFC. They gave him some really hard fights. And after he's like, you know what? I'm sick of fighting. The only other thing I know how to do is grow weed. And, um, you know, I, that was before I went legal. And I thought it was a long shot. But he followed his heart. And he's a great success now. And um, we're going to go fishing on his boat uh, next weekend in the ocean. So another blessing of the coronavirus. Right, Granahan, you always look on the bright side of death, and um, I know this has opened up some opportunities on, on your behalf, too, so um, why don't you talk a little bit? Well, I, you know, I'll tell you, I'm over here on the, the bearded clam myself, a little bit off the grid on the water tonight, and uh, yeah, it opened up a little opportunity. You know, certain times you can, you know, take, take hotels and, and, you know, just turn them maybe into... Uh, into underground bars and, and, and houses of ill repute, but we won't talk too much about that now. Now, will we, Stefan Bonner? That was just a part time business, the Hotel Corona. Uh, but you know, That's I'll right. tell you guys, uh, man, Bonner and I were on a show this morning, and man, it was getting heated uh, because all this stuff, it's just, it's amazing the bullshit that lies behind it that the people don't see. The Corona Con. That's right. You know what? what? Our government does best inflict fear into us, into our minds, into our hearts, and you see a society run by fear. You think people are shitting ten times more than they used to? No. Why is all the toilet paper out? Because of fear. And fear's yeah. what's keeping people locked up right now. But I'm telling you, we're getting sick of it. This is a big power move on the part of the oligarchies. Who's going to get richer from this? It's the Amazons of the world. It's the Walmarts. Come on. Our president, Trump, is the son of a contractor. He knows what a recession could do for, for really powerful contracting companies. No yeah. damage to it. So yeah. how has this affected uh, your gym, Stefan? You're still it's, in business, I understand. It's, it's bullshit. Not a lot of small businesses are this is a power move to crush the little guys it really is and right now we're still afloat we might have to shut our doors who knows if we are able to survive then um a lot of gyms are going under then maybe we could get some of their leftover clientele who knows only time will tell but we're definitely 
taking a hurt right now. We're losing a lot of money in the gym. It's not a good time for gyms and small businesses as a whole. But um, that's what this move is. You know, if, if you really look behind it, who's going to benefit from that? Who's going to get wealthier? Who's going to get richer? And uh, it's the upper 10%. And really, this kind of fear allows them to say, hey, we're going to make a mandatory virus, you know? And like, we'll see. We'll see. If they start launching a, a digital currency, the U.S. does in, within the next year, then I'll, I'll know a lot of this uh, conspiracy theory is, is for real. And a lot of people are, um, yeah. It, I mean, take it for what it is, but it is a proven fact. 240 studies have shown the harmful effects of radiation associated with 5G. That is true. That is true. And those towers are going up all over. I, I was close to hopping in my car and driving to my son's school. So I could show you a tower going up right there right now. And it's a fact. It causes cell poison, cell toxicity. So it's another thing like, um, you know, yes, I, um, real water, I'm part owner of this company as well, but it ionized water is one of the best things you can do for radiation poisoning. The Japanese are really high on it. A lot of research has been done on it called ERW water, electrolyzed reduced water. And it's true. It, it, they clean out their rivers and streams and lakes after we nuke them with this type of technology. So it, it is helpful for that. And really this virus is uh, killing people the, for the most part who are sick and weak, you know, and yeah. And you keep your system healthy, and this, this doesn't phase you, man. Um, it, it's not going to. I may have I have coronavirus. I won't know. My stomach was really upset a couple weeks ago in the morning, and I sh shipped out and went on with my day. Strong systems walk right through coronavirus. Yeah, it's, it's so easy to get people to stay home and cower in fear. And, and you know, there's a few takeaways, things that people don't don't ever talk about. Now, there was already a commercial real estate bubble before this, and the price of commercial real estate is in the toilet right now. So businesses are getting gobbled up by the big corporations while the family businesses and individuals are struggling just to survive. Many going out of business. You know, we're a distributor here. And I'm talking to our accounts. 60% of our accounts are closed right now. 60% of our accounts are forced to be closed right now. I got buddies like Matt Schmansky that own seven bars and restaurants. He's only going to reopen four. He's telling me, hey, my employees, I laid them off. Now they're making 600 a week doing nothing. You think they're going to come back? This, this is done by design. It's the corporatocracy. Big corporations combined with, with mainstream media and big government. And I spoke for Donald Trump, and I said this on this morning on the show we were on. Back in 2016, I was keynote speaker at one of his rallies in West Columbia. And I liked Donald Trump. I grew up in outside of the city. He used to come into one of the strip clubs that I bounced and managed at. I have a whole story with him and A.J. Benza from back in those days. But I'll tell you, Donald Trump, back in the day, has was in bed with the Cuomos and he did some underground, um, some devious real estate deals with the Cuomos and go back and investigate it. So I always say two wings of the same bird. President Trump might have wanted to drain the swamp when he was running for president, but when he got elected, a lot of times he gets caught in the swamp himself. So don't trust anybody, don't trust government, don't trust the mainstream sure. media. Well, that's don't funny. forget, that's primarily what he is. He's like the kid of a contractor. So that's yeah, his absolutely. business, is, is buying up properties after a recession. And it's, yeah, absolutely. And, and Donald Trump going takes, through the family yeah. game as long as he's been living. Uh, yeah, he knows you could take advantage of that. And, and one other thing, you know, and, Hannibal, when this and, first started, I was I was on your show, and I was and I what I what I said back then, I gave the quote from Benjamin Franklin. Fear is the foundation of most governments, and that's something people don't realize. My cousin, she is, an, is a nurse in Garden City. I lived within 40 miles of Manhattan until I was 30 years old. All my family and friends are up there. That's where this is supposedly the worst. My cousin's a, hosp uh, a nurse in Garden City, 15 miles from Manhattan. You know what her message was to the family was? Yeah, people are dying. But most of them already have a foot in the grave and they're 
and they're almost in hospice. And then you get these people that will give you these outliers like, oh, this guy, Ted, was 32, man. He was in great shape and he died. There's always going to be outliers. We sh shouldn't destroy our economy, our way of life, shred our constitution f for outliers. When has our government ever cared about human life? The answer is never. Look, we learned something from the, the housing market crash of 08. Like, we, we learned that that was a squeeze that really put away a lot of the smaller companies. And they learned something like, wow, if we could drive the world into one of these, imagine how powerful we can be, how rich and powerful we can be. Um, and then it's the truth of the matter. This thing is nothing. What is the death toll in the whole entire world at like 200,000? Most of them like sick and pre existing conditions. Yeah. Bad, shitty food has been killing over 10 million people a year for a long freaking time. And, you know, come on, look at the Bill Gates of the world going around saying he wants to. I mean, he quoted uh, that methods to reduce population control because it's true. Our population has been booming. It's doubled from like 1940 to 1980 and doubled again from 1980 to now. So, I mean, that is a problem, and we are wrecking the world, the globe. Um, so you always want to see, hey, um, motivation, motivation. The, the less fear you have running through you and the less you really want yourself, the more you can kind of see the underlying motivation that lies behind some of these moves. And um, I can see it clear as day when I hear the – People talk, oh, we care about the people so much, so we're not going to reopen businesses till every last case of coronavirus has been extinguished. What I hear is, we're not going to reopen the business till every last small and even medium-sized business has been suffocated so we can get richer. Yeah, in Canada, it's only one in every million people that actually have the virus, yet they've locked the entire country down. Uh, I've heard of two MMA fighters that have caught it and fully recovered. Have you guys heard of any MMA fighters that have come close to dying or anything from it? Well, wow. Right? You told me Militich had it. Yeah, Militich Yeah, Militich. It. Yeah, that's three, actually. Yeah, that's true. Militich <laughs> had it. His whole family had it, and they recovered. I know the yes. news anchor, George Stephanopoulos, his wife had it really bad. And he, um, throwing up and fever and all that, took her to the hospital. He just got tested just um, to get tested because she had it. He said he felt completely fine, completely asymptomatic, but he tested positive. And I hear a lot of children are carrying and they test positive. Um, but honestly, man, it's really, it's no big fucking deal, man. It's no big deal compared to, like, uh, the things we have currently killing the world's population off. Um, it's an excuse. It's an excuse for somebody to gain more wealth and power. Yes. Shame. Something, to consider, something to consider, too, is how few people have even been tested. And that's the thing. I, I, have, I feel like a ton of people have this and either don't even know it or have had it in its past. Uh, yeah. and, and then we actually we actually look at like celebrity supposedly had it like Tom Hanks and his wife and uh, Fredo there, Chris Cuomo. Lies, uh, you know, they're, they're because lies. a lot of lies, a lot of it's propaganda, and a lot of it's because they have the money and they've been tested. When you look at when you think about the number of people that have died and the number of people that have even been tested for it, the likelihood is that there's that there's tons more people who have it and that the death rate is even smaller than what we think it is. It's exactly. infantile. And I think it's a 98% recovery rate from what I've been reading, isn't it? And that's, yeah, and, and that's Hannibal, that's, that's based on the people who were tested. Estimate. Yeah, that's based on the people who were tested. What I'm saying and, is and that I, the survival rate's probably even much greater than that. And a lot of these celebrities that are we here and are coming out and having it and talking about it, I'm, I'm calling bullshit. I'm like, yeah. you got to think, um, uh, you know, look who's got them in their back pocket. Look who wants to have them help the powers to be push that fear into uh, the people. 
Not, I was going to say the American people, the Canadian people, the, the people of the world, everyone is, the fear is run rampant. It's ridiculous. Yeah, Chris Cuomo pulling that stunt, saying he's staying in his basement on CNN, and then you come to find out that he's going outside every day, and he's getting he gets into a fight, beats up a guy on a, on his bicycle because the guy recognizes him. I mean, that guy's that guy's a thug, and and you know he's a typical mainstream media propagandist. Yes, bullshit, man, lies, man. I hate to say it, man. I used to be proud to be an American. Uh, you know, of this great country, but man, they're just throwing so much bullshit. And it's bad enough they lied to us about weed. Now they're actually coming out and saying, hey, so sorry, we lied to you all those years. When I was growing up, being out with weed, it's a, a fate worse than death. You were expelled from school and, and all this trouble and and like going to rehab. And now they, we were lying to you the oh, whole time. That so, was, that I mean, I just don't believe the problem they say. <laughs> Reefer Madness. Remember that Reefer Madness video? Yeah. <laughs> Reefer Madness. A complete lie. Governments are in the business of lying and manipulating. Do you mm -hmm. think UFC should uh, remove the ban on marijuana? Because is that really going to help you too much in, a, in an exactly. MMA? Honestly, like, if, if, um, some, anyone who I fought my entire career, whether they a THC in their system or not was completely irrelevant to me. Yeah, I mean, a lot of guys, they get drunk. A lot of guys, they get drunk and they beat their wives. When they smoke weed, they forget to beat their wives. You know, so. That's right. Mm -hmm. All my years of bouncing, I've never had to deal with a violent pot smoker <laughs> ever. <laughs> no, it's true. It's it's like, that's a reason our four founding fathers like George Washington and that, it was a law. You had to grow hemp. It was such a versatile yeah, plan. Man. And now the UFC is putting all this money um, into this company from Canada. I forget the name off the top of the head. Because um, they know the CBD helps. And it's a great alternative to the, the harder drugs. And it's a neuroprotective drug um cannabinoids are and that means they help and i could talk from experience i my mri um, from 2014 didn't look the same as the one from 2004 all right and uh, there's a red flag on there for cte and dementia so like it, it affected me I, I a lot of ways a lot of ways and one of them was the, the like going and like could not be able to sleep and get put on like Valium and Ambien and then and then drinking too and like now I've just been using CBD GHC um off the booze off the Valium off the Ambien the only prescription drug I, I'm on is Gabapentin which isn't too in bad no more Jack Daniels. and you have your uh, dojo there that uh, hopefully will get back to normal operations sooner than later. Is there any fighters there that are up and coming and could make a dent in MMA? I mean, I've got a couple of young guys, amateur guys. They're really green, but it's fun. It's fun for me. And um, no, it's not like if uh, I don't have like a big pro fight team, like an extreme coach or it's more just people who are into fitness, who are into martial arts. And uh, yeah, there are a couple of young guys who are into fighting. But if they get like, you know, really good and awesome, I'm the first guy who's going to say, hey, you know, um, Time to go to Coach Tours to get some sparring. Go spar with some UFC guys. You know, you kind of um, graduated from here. Still come train, represent the gym. But, you know, yeah, I, I teach because I love martial arts, you know. And um, I like martial arts and fitness. And now the plan is to, if we survive this, I'm putting a wrestling ring in there. And we're going to offer some pro wrestling classes as well and make it just like the old Takata Dojo back in the early pride days, baby, of MMA, pro wrestling, weight training, martial arts all under one roof. Nice. Ah, Hannibal, have you Hannibal, speaking of those types of facilities, have you talked to uh to Santino, Anthony Corelli, Rayley? Because I had him on my show and he had a um he had a center up there that had MMA training, grappling training, and pro wrestling. And didn't he have a – he was running a pro wrestling promotion. I was telling him I wanted to get Book Bonner up there to wrestle. Uh, I think more impact does their tapings in his school now, and there's some other companies. I don't know if he's still 
runs his own promotion, but he definitely still has that facility. It's similar to Bo what Bonner wants to do. That was a cool facility. I remember we, we did a broadcast from when I was doing my show from his facility. Yeah, he was a good dude, a good, good guy. He's up there in Canada, though. Is he close to you, Hannibal? He's about five hours away. Oh, yeah, Canada is a big place, man. He's, um, isn't that um, Scott? Are you talking about Scott D'Amore's school? Uh, no, so Scott's is no different. Way. Scott's is just wrestling. Santino's uh, is about two oh, hours. Okay. Scott's, they've got uh, MMA, kickboxing, grappling, and pro wrestling, but they have an actual like wrestling arena there with lights and it can yeah. Get people. See, my gym too, Silver Wolf, uh, Hacienda in Arville here, forty five ten West Hacienda. But it's the kids say it'll be a great place to have some shows at some pro wrestling shows. We already had some. A grappling exhibition for the grand opening, and it's uh, it'll be a good place for that. So, um, hey man, we survived this, and I throw that pro wrestling ring in there. Who knows, King of Connecticut? Maybe you'll get uh, another shot at me. We need a, we need a rematch pick out on the flying I'm elbow. The drop. That elbow this time, big man. I'm moving out of the way of the elbow. Hey, hey Hannah, you know, well, you're back at it too, right, brother? You've been no, wrestling. Here and there, mostly promoting it though. But yeah, definitely, we'll have to have you out here some one of these days for sure. Likewise, likewise. We'll get Why? You you on I'm the surprised show. MLW or Impact hasn't uh, brought you on as one of their regulars because MLW um, has a bunch of MMA fighters working for them now, like Tom Lawler, uh, King Mo. Yeah, they're they're kind of like into having guys sign exclusive contracts. Uh, I like being free, you know, like free safety, okay. freedom, baby. What's been your yeah, favorite yes. wrestling match freedom. so far for fans? If if they want to look up, like a good example of your wrestling for promoters or fans that haven't seen you wrestle, what would be good for them to look up? Honestly, my first match and my last match. My first match, King of Connecticut called it House oh, of yeah, Glory and Show Tanaka. I mean, for as green as I was, it was a quick five-minute match, and it really worked. Great. Great commentary, by the way. In my last match versus Logan James down on Black Label Pro in the Chicago area, man, it was a good, solid 15-minute match that had all sorts of action, including a spectacular flying elbow drop finish, which... Man, fucking 43 and hitting that elbow drop like it's nothing. Uh, I'm loving it, man. Those two favorite matches, honestly. Are you frozen, Matt? Of course, your tag match, uh, the Legends and Vixens. Oh, I, I love ah, it. I, I, it. I said, uh, tag match with Legends and Vixens, my man. Yes, I, the, my favorite part about that was I, um, I got the best out of uh, Matt Granahan. He, he gave me the match of his career, a career match there, brother. That was what a classic to Summer for. Steel, the Buns of Steel. I think that oh, one got a lot of hits on YouTube too, didn't it, Matthew? Yeah, yeah we, it's here on, on Hannibal TV and uh, getting a lot of hits and attention and also on Seth and Bonner's Instagram. Very good. Yeah, what is your yeah. Instagram? What if, what if uh, someone here wants to Everything's just my name, so Stefan Bonner and P H A N and A R for Bonner. Um, yeah, but Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it, uh, Snapchat, everything, everything, brother. Yes, get your weed from Hytiva, H Y T I V A, cannabis on demand. Uh, drink your wheel water, ionized, alkalized water, and don't but forget when you get Vegas. Come check out your martial arts and pro wrestling training at Silver Wolf if we're still open. So you're busy. Yeah. You're, you got two companies. You still dabble in pro wrestling. Three companies, I guess, including your gym. How do you have any spare time? It's not really work, man. It's uh, it's fun, you know. Like if teaching is fun for me. Too, pro right? wrestling's fun for me. Uh, what's that? You're also a comedian. 
stand up comedy. I know after I got my DUI and like I got fired from all my employment, uh, and my comedy was getting really good because I couldn't get any other work. But uh, since then, uh, I was able to get some other things going and, and get involved with a couple uh, companies. And um, you know, I, I never did the gym thing, and, and like since no one else would touch me, that was a good chance to open the gym, and I got that going. And gradually, um, the dust settled, and here I am. And now, uh, went from my phone never ringing and being unhireable to to being pretty busy and fulfilled. And I'm telling you, man, I you know we had some good times, Granahan, but I don't miss the drinking. I really don't. I I drink enough for two lives. Yeah, man. I'll, t- I'll tell you, I um, I have to give one little shout out here to my girl, Glory Diffidente. Her new music video is coming out tomorrow. Uh, and uh, everybody check that out. I'll be blasting it out on my social media. And she told me, and this goes back to kind of brings it home to coronavirus. She was uh, in Venezuela. She was selling out stadiums 2014, 15 as a uh, recording artist, singer, dancer. And uh, after the coup there, she came here under asylum. With, and she's here with her mom. And they tell me all the time that this is an eerie feeling, what's going on in America. She feels like it's Venezuela. I mean, cl- businesses closing down, uh, more reliance on the government, for- forced closures. This is a scary time, my friends, in, in America. You know, I'm, I'm not usually my usual cheerful self. I'm a little somber of what's going on and seeing what, what's going on here in this great nation of ours. And you're at King Granimal on on Twitter and Matthew Granahan on Facebook if people want to look you up, correct? Yeah, Matthew J. Granahan on Facebook, King.of Connecticut on Instagram. I don't use the Twitter that much. Phil Phil Baroni set up my Twitter and he had me follow a lot of uh, a lot of porn stars, so I don't use that quite <laughs> as, as much. <laughs> What's happened to Phil Baroni? Does any of you, either of you know? I haven't heard about him for a while. Yeah, he yelled at me last week and hung up on me uh, for no reason. Okay. He's a poison. You're better off um, not with a guy like that in your life. He just, everything he's around uh, rots and dies. And Stefan, you just had your big anniversary of your of your first fight with Foreign Griff- Forrest Griffin that basically put the UFC on the map. Um, any memories of, of the anniversary and the and the fight that people still talk about all these years later? Man, I you know, it's nice. People say nice. That's cool and all. Um, people remember that. It's, it's pretty cool to be remembered for that. You know, it could be like uh, OJ and remembered for something horrible. So... Yeah, it's I can't complain, but in terms of just like holding on to my personal history and all that, I can't let it all go. You know, I, I you know, it was nice. Uh, I feel like my life's a book, and I close a chapter, and I'm on another. And now the fighting chapter has been long and closed, and it was good. I, you know, like but look about my profit. Like I have a lot of people, including my friends, that are all like, "Come on, you got one with like." they're still attached to me going in there and fighting and I'm so over it. And it's just amazing to see like um, the, the pain in their eyes. When I tell them, I really am not interested in going back in and doing that. It's like, I let them down It's really bizarre. Um, but no, I'm so glad I don't, I'm going to have to go uh, make a living doing that anymore. And uh, I know I have definitely in the 14 year had suffered, Irreparable, jam- irreparable damage, and I'm trying to do my best now to repair and take care of what's left, which isn't too much. Isn't too much. Could we possibly see you versus Ortiz in a pro wrestling match? We've heard that <laughs> he's been training at the Performance Center at WWE. Uh, I mean, if he, if that guy could actually learn how to cut a promo, then yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I will go and eat. And, Put him over and let him pin me, but um, and that ain't happening anything. So, do you do you ever do you ever watch Tito when he tries to cut a promo? It's hilarious. He tries to. It's like the worst impersonations of Hulk mm-hmm. Hogan and Macho Man. He has no. Original. You want to laugh? Go when he go check out when he did the Affliction post fight interviews. 
Oh, oh, funny, funny stuff. Nice. You and guys right after the fight, and like he is just so bad. And they on YouTube, they have. Um, I hope it's still up, but they, they they put together a little compilation of, of his best interview moments from post fight affliction. It is awesome. Maybe that's the reason WWE hasn't actually formally signed him yet. Maybe it's the promo skills. Did you guys <laughs> do, he had uh, that fight with Alberto Del Rio, but they, I think they called it a draw or something. Did they ever finally settle if, if Tito got the win back, or is it permanently a draw? I think I think Tito um, got it back, didn't he? I have uh, no idea what was going on. I just, I don't even pay attention, really. What happened? He he fell. He fought a wrestler for combating. I know that. I know he fought Alberto and beat him, but I didn't hear about the win getting overturned. Yeah, the way it was ruled a no contest about a, a month later. It means he maybe. failed the urine test. I believe so. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know what, All right. what came out of it. He said he was going to fight it, but I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, well, I, I always heard um, he's the Wizenator, so I just figured he would run clear. And what do you think of Tank Abbott, Stefan? I just interviewed him the other day. He's quite a character. He also did wrestling. Um, I I heard. Oh, well, I haven't. I I like Tank. I always was a fan of him, but I hear his health wasn't too good. Good. Um, um, he got a liver transplant, I believe. I I don't know for a fact. So I'm pulling for him. I'm hoping the best. Uh, how was he? How was uh, how was his? He, he's doing better. I guess he also had a parasite in his stomach, which was one of the reasons why he got so thin. They didn't know he had a parasite that was eating most of the food he was putting into himself. So they've killed the parasite now. So he's doing better. I mean, he, he actually had a, a, a transplant, a liver transplant. He had a liver and a kidney transplant. Wow. Both. Wow. That is, wow. That's intense. You know, he, he, found, he found out that he was having health problems because I was, I was working with Dan Severn to get sponsors for this thing called UR Fight. I don't know if you guys remember yeah, I that. I remember that. Yeah, and... and and uh, Shamrock fought Hoist Gracie the week before. He was supposed to fight Dan, and he tested positive. He got pinched for some stuff, and Dan was so pissed because he was – Dan was, like, always – I mean, for his age, you saw when we roasted him, um, Devin, like, over the uh, over the fall. Man, the dude is, like, like – he's like Benjamin Button. He, like, ages in reverse. And he was so geared up for that fight. And then they tried to put Tank Abbott in as a substitute. And on, at least from what Dan told me, that's when Tank started to find out that he had some uh, health problems. So hopefully, you know, he can get that taken care of. I always, I always liked Tank Abbott. He was funny in pro wrestling and, you know, early MMA, knocking guys' heads off. He was a, he's an entertaining dude. Supposedly, he was making six hundred grand a year in WCW, too, so he made more from wrestling than he did in MMA overall. Uh, Ken Shamrock's another guy that did well in wrestling. Did you have any experiences with uh, Shamrock, Stefan? Yeah, we got uh, um, an impact there. When he came out, I got to help set that angle up with him and Moose. I got, had that match with Moose. We tried to finish our angle from the Bow for Glory pay-per-view. And we got to have our match. And then Shamrock Sham comes in to save the day after... Moose gets the chair, and that was kind of his introduction back into the pro wrestling world. Um, but that's uh, wow, that's an incredible man. But you get like uh, Ken Shamrock looks as good and he's as fit as he is, and um, you know, then Tank on the other hand is new liver, new kidney, and having all sorts of health problems. And the same there, but that's what happens. We get old and die, man, and. I mean, who knows? Like, uh, you know, in 10 years, I could be, like, have Parkinson's or something. You never know. You never know. Yeah, it's right around the corner. It's the fullest, man. And, and I want to say, too, you know, we obviously don't want to um, don't want to undercut or undermine you know, people pass, had a passed away from the coronavirus. It's horrible when any, whenever anybody dies. You don't want anybody to die. But this just the overreaction is just disgusting. 
like you said, it's it's pure tyranny, you know, plain and simple. And the last question I'll ask Stefan before we close this off is what are your thoughts on this uh, this fight island for international fighters in the UFC? I guess somehow, even though a lot of borders are closed, they're going to get people to this this island to train and fight on. It seems like a pretty cool concept to get around this lockdown. What's your opinion of it? Yeah, I think it's a great idea, but I think by the time this plan gets implemented, kind of the world will be back opened up, and there won't be a, a use for it. But I mean, it's kind of cool to have an island that you could have fights at. I mean, that's what Enter the Dragon originally was, and I, that's what I felt like going into the first jungle fight with Cheetah, like I was in Enter the Dragon, way in the boat in the middle of the Amazon River. So to have something with that sort of feel to it and then Dana White the rich powerful owner of the island that br brings people out to fight it's, it's really far out and wild but it could work I'm just worried about the time issue um, but I mean I wouldn't mind going to a fight on the island you know hopefully he sends an invite to uh, the Playboy Mansion who's ever running it nowadays since Hugh Hefner has left there Right. I think Playboy. Right. Didn't Playboy or should I go that down the hell? Business? Where is he? It, yeah, it did already. I know the magazine does. went out of business, from what I understand. But Playboy might be around in other forms, but they don't make the magazine anymore. I guess. Yes, the uh, magazine in general is an anachronism, a thing of the past. Did you ever visit the Playboy Mansion? Yeah, I actually, speaking of the devil, the week before I fought Tito, I went there with Boss Rutten and Tank Abbott and drank them both under the table the night of my life. Oh, my goodness. One of the best nights of my life. Let me tell you. Who could say that? Both Tank and Boss Rutten awesome. to put them down <laughs> under the table. Not many people could say that. It was worth dropping the split decision to Tito for a night like that. Did you get lucky with any of the ladies that night? Oh, boy. Man, I should save it for the book, you know? Whiskey dick. Mm -mm. Liquid Viagra for this guy. Ah. Uh, is, is there anything else you guys want to say to close us off? Thanks for uh, giving us your views on this whole coronavirus lockdown. I'm glad that at least yeah. you're, uh, Don't you're one of listen to them. They're lying to you. They're lying to you. This is a joke. Drink your wheel water, smoke your weed, and stay healthy, brothers. Last question. I got to say, since you bring up smoking the weed, uh, if I ever have it, I usually use the drops to, to save my lungs. Do you, do you smoke it usually, or what's your favorite way to take it in? Yeah, well, everything. Um, but, yeah, I got the drops right here, the night drops. It's got a lot of CBD in there too, valerian root melatonin. My buddy from Healing Panda CBD whips these up. But yeah, you know, I got my got my flower right here. Nothing wrong with a little flower. Yep, got the vape too. Nothing wrong with little vapes. So um, I uh, I'm pro every method of ingestion. And uh, to close this off, I mean, you said Tito Ortiz can't cut a wrestling promo. Could you do a wrestling promo on Tito Ortiz for us? Oh, my God, I did. I legitimately turned heel and took the biggest asshole in the world of mixed martial arts and made him the good guy and helped people cheer for him. That's, that's a heel turn. That's a heel turn. I went from the nice, lovable ultimate fighter guy next door to be in booed wouldn't believe it brother Pressing the mma i did it before anyone else tito you're dumber than shit learn how to cut a promo and i'll put you over you're a big and dummy peace thanks for having me hannibal thanks for joining me king of connecticut hi tiba.com real water American Psycho Martial Arts located inside Silver Wolf Gym in Vegas. Check us out for pro wrestling as well as fitness and martial arts. American Psycho Stephen Bonner, drinking real water, signing out.
Peace. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.